Hey, thanks for joining us as we start this series, <clears throat> excuse me, called Love. Somebody already, <clears throat> somebody already said to me, oh, we're talking about love, and Juno, you're dressed up a little bit today, so are you looking for some love? And uh, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm looking for some love, but I'm not dating yet, or don't worry, nobody's here scouting me out if they want to date me, so I just thought I'd... At least I don't think they are. Anyway, uh, just thought I'd, I'd clarify that. But we're going to see all kinds of aspects of love over the next month. And we know that even the month of February is a sensitive month for some people. Even the word love is hitting some emotional buttons for even those of, of you who are happily and uh, wonderfully married. But the idea of love... Uh, just stirs up some emotions. And, you know, back in the day, uh, oh, I'll save that for next week. Okay. But anyway, uh, so we're glad that you are here, and especially as we, we, we dive into really some of the basics of our Christian faith and some of the most foundational aspects of God's character uh, toward us. Now, as you could as you saw in the video, and as many of you know, there are, are four types of love uh, that we'll be talking about over the next few weeks. You know, one of them is eros, the idea of romantic love, husband and, and wife love. One of them is, is phileo, friendship, relationships. You know, one of them is also storge, the idea of family relationships. And then today, I have the, the privilege of leaning into and speaking about agape, God's love. And so there's a, there's a story about this passage that we're looking at. We're looking at 1 John uh, chapter 4. And there was a, a wedding, and, and part of uh, that wedding was some verses from 1 John 4. Now, not the verses we're using, but right after. 1 John 4 is full of... Of, of verses that tell us about God's love. And 1 John 4.18 says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now that was going to be shared at a wedding. Sort of fits. You know, some of you may have had it at your wedding. But the young man who was sharing Scripture wasn't overly familiar with the Bible, and so he went to, not first John, but he went to the book of John. So John, he gets up and reads this from John 4.18. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. What, it, what you have said is true. I'm sure there was some interesting conversation at the dinner that night uh, for that wedding. All that to say is that uh, I think we need to probably pay attention to detail as we look at God's word, uh, but also to know that uh, God's love really uh, is the, the basics for, for who we are as a, create, as a creature created in his image. So let me pray this morning. Lord, thank you uh, for your love. And so once again, even as Ryan mentioned, we are here and we acknowledge your presence. And Lord, we do realize that something special happens when, when your people gather to, together. So thank you for everyone joining us here this morning. And we know even though the word love is an emotional trigger for everybody, I simply pray that we'll be able to experience your love in a new and deeper way, both emotionally and spiritually, as we work through uh, the next few weeks. Hear our thoughts, Lord, and, and may the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, because you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Again, to, to understand this passage that we are talking about in 1 John, uh, it's important to know that, that in the context of that chapter, uh, John was saying, uh, no, 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 there were issues about false teachers. 
In fact, uh, throughout Scripture, you'll notice there's, there's a theme of that at times where, you know, there are just false teachers out there. And it's just like, well, who are you going to believe? And, and how do you know that they're really, what they're teaching is really uh, from what they have known as, as God's Word? And back then, back in the day, some of the issues were, uh, was Jesus fully God? Or was he fully human? Or was he both? And that was just a constant dialogue and, and, uh, and conversations among people. Is this guy, is he, is he fully God? And some would have said, yeah, he's fully God at certain points. And some would have said, no, he's, he's fully man, but he's only fully man at certain points. And then we'll understand it in the Christian belief and as we read scripture, to say, no, he's fully God and fully man at the same time. And how he does it, that is a mystery. So as, as John was talking uh, to the people about this, one of the tests, one of the litmus tests to figure out, is this guy everything he says he is, or is he really even teaching us uh, appropriately, is found in the, in the verses that we are looking at today, 1 John 4, 7 through 12. Now that's on page 856 in the, in the Bibles in front of you. If you need one, take it with you. Otherwise, you can swipe on your device or you can follow along. But let me, let me just read you this. And what's interesting is Paul gives it a one-two punch. The first aspect is Paul is saying, this is how you figure out if you got some weirdos teaching, false teachers. And secondly, uh, John just unveils some wonderful characteristics of this agape love. So let me read these to you. First uh, John 4, 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this is, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. I mean, folks, there is a whole lot wrapped up into those words that, that we see in, in, in 1 John. In fact, uh, that was from the, what, what version are we, uh, New International Version? That's the one that's in your, your seats there. But the Amplified ver Version, I like even how they just start off. Verse 7 says, Beloved. Let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves others is born of God and knows God through personal experience. And so in the book of 1 John, it's a short, it's a short book, uh, so if you can read and track, which is easier said than done, or Google it, you can find out, uh, 44 times love is mentioned in 1 John. 44 times. And in this chapter, chapter 4, it is mentioned uh, 27 times. And then just in these six verses that we're, we're diving into today, it's mentioned an, uh, 13 times. So it is important for us to look at what this thing, love, that John talks about here. In, in 1 John. And, and I trust as, as we just uh, work through this for a little bit that maybe uh, you'll be able to, to reframe uh, your understanding of the word because we use it in a lot of different ways in the English language. We just have one word for love. You know, you could love your wife, love your spouse, you can love your kids, you could love red vines, you could love Neil Diamond music. You could love gardening. Uh, we use the same word, but in the original language, that word love uh, is translated four different ways. 
And that's what, again, we're going to be peeling back each way over the next month. Today is God's love, God's sacrificial, unconditional love for each of us. We've thrown around the term here and there, for the love of God. Focus, if we just had the love of God. If we just lived out our life in that unconditional way, un, uh, that sacrificial way that God has toward us, this world would indeed be a different place. So let's just go ahead. Let's just take a look uh, again at, at uh, 4, verse 7. Uh, I'm just going to uh, highlight some things here. So that it might be revealed who truly knows him. So again, John is telling us love is going to, to show us uh, those true teachers. You know, it, it's going to uh, identify the false teachers in the process. And again, this love we're, we're talking about is, a, is, is something that, that we just can't do on ourself, uh, by ourselves. It is God's love poured into us, that it is unconditional, sacrificial, no strings attached kind of love. It is, it's, it's, it's a type of thing that, that we go back, and if you look at 1 Corinthians 13, you know, the love chapter, probably shared at many of your weddings or your nieces or your grandkids, you know, uh, this intertwines with that. And it, and it upholds that because it starts off with if you can speak and if you can speak with the tongues of men and of angels but do not have love, what? You're just a gong, a clanging symbol, whatever version you may be, be reading there. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that I can move a mountains but don't have love, nothing. And if I give all I have away. If I give, if, if, if you give, you know, Ryan's still looking for some TVs and a few things up there. If you give Ryan five grand to finish up that youth room, but you don't have love, eh. oh, he'll take your money. <laughs> but that isn't, that, that isn't going to make you right in God's eyes. So, so this is what, what John is talking about then. Uh, and so what he's saying that if, who's ever teaching, if... If you're not seeing love exhibited uh, through him, then the, the kind of love that God talks about, then maybe he is a false teacher. In verses 9 and 10, so that he might show his love uh, among us. And again, that is just uh, uh, so that he may show his love among us. Let me read that for you. 9 and 10, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And you can't read this without that most well-known verse in Scripture of knowing, for God so loved the world. This is the Un, this, is the un, this is the selfless, unselfish, sacrificial love that is talked about here in verse 9. Showed us his love. And folks, it, it, as you read through this, you can't help but think and read and understand that love is more than just a feeling. It's more than just an emotion. It really has to be in action. Now, we did a series, I don't know how long ago, a year or two ago, my old age gets that confused. But, you know, uh, we talked about faith in action. It's our faith in Jesus that drives us to action, and it's our faith in Jesus that drives us to live out the love that God tells us to. Now, it doesn't say that we're to like everybody. Uh, when I was married prior to my wife's passing, you know, there were times it's like, I don't like you. She used to say that to me. I don't like you right now, but I love you. And those of you with kids, grandkids, how many of you have, have said, you know what, no, I, when you get that phone call, and when in opportune time, I don't like what you're doing. I don't like you right now, 
but in your heart you love them. With God's love, God loves us no matter what we've done, no matter what we haven't done. He has showed his love for us. And, and I think in our world we find that difficult to comprehend because we often attach love to something. Love to a, uh, there, there's a string attached to it. Only if, if you do this, if you do that, you've earned my love. But people, the love we're talking about, God's love, is that he has showed it to us. And that showing it is that he came to walk among us because we kept messing things up. He wanted us to show, he wanted to show us the ways, so he came in the form of Jesus. Yes, fully God and, and fully man. So that we might have the opportunity to experience his love. And that's what we look at in the, uh, in the 10th verse. When uh, the 10th verse here, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent uh, his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, again, we don't use that word atoning a lot. I think the only time I use it is teaching probably. It's, it's not a, a typical word that we use. But it really refers to making restitution. Making right. You know, you could almost say, you know, paying the debt, so to speak. And so, atoning isn't just that, that Jesus died for us, but that he cleared the slate clean. That he hit the delete button on your debt of sin, and it is gone. And I still think, for many of us, that's a, a difficult concept to know uh, why would a God, why would somebody do that for me? Because what am I going to do in return? And in reality, we can't. We know we can't earn God's love. We just simply accept it. So you can't earn God's love by throwing some money in the offering plate. You can't earn God's love by, by being in a rooted group. You can't earn God's love by serving on a team around here. His love is made available to us, clears us of our sin, and as we fall more in love with this God of creation who changes our heart, then we can love. And again, at times you can't love somebody, but God can. And it is perfectly natural and normal to say, yee, no way. Now, you're not called to like him or her. You're called to love him or her. And that is a process for some people. And, and the reality is we can't do it. The good news is God has shown that to us in the person of Jesus. And so, again, we talk about God's love, and we talk about it a lot. We'll be talking about it as we, we enter the, the, uh, the Lenten season, as we think about Easter coming up. We are talking about God's love all over the place. And it's his sacrificial, unconditional, always ever-present love for us. And that's what John is talking about here. And that is something that we often take for granted. We just sang it. And I, you know, made some notes here. His grace is, 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 uh, covers all my sin. That's atonement, that we just sang that song. His grace covers all my sin. Folks, that's the atonement. In, in verse 11, uh, dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Boy, at times that's just, uh, again, uh, easier said than done. And I don't think anywhere in Scripture do we have the, uh, the, the MasterCard or the Visa card or the Gold card or whatever these cards are called, uh, that says uh, there's no sir, silver bullet that's going to make living the Christian life easy. But yet as we read through here, and as much as we want to dance around some of these words or pretend they're not there, we as God's people are called to live out 
his love one to another. And it's to the world. And what's exciting about that, it reminds me that it's not just for me. Although that's very true. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But we forget, for God so loved the world. Now in John, when he says the world, word world, he's talking about the cosmos, for God so loved the world. And in uh, 1 John, that, world, that word world is, is, all, is in reference to the, the, uh, the messed up world. We use the term when people are just plain worldly. That's more in a negative way. And as we read through this, it, you know, God's love for the world who's messed up, who's screwed up, and yet he gives us his uh, undivided, unearned uh, love. That is agape love. And then it comes into uh, verse 12. So that... Let me read this for you here. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Again, it is a call to action, people. And as I read this, uh, I am reminded, convicted, and confused still why certain things in our society happen if there are so many people who love Jesus. If there are so many people who have opened up their hearts to this God of creation who loves us unconditionally, who has sacrificed everything for us, that gives us power to change the world, there's still a, ooh, I almost said something I shouldn't have, there's still a boatload of racism that needs to stop. I don't understand it. I don't understand how a believer can say, I love you, Jesus. You have erased my sins. You have taken care of all these things I did and even things nobody knows about. And you have made me clean for you. And yet I, for the color of a skin, or because somebody's a little different than me, I think I have the right to have an attitude and not to treat them as you would. It just, I don't understand it. And I think there's a whole bunch of white people that are going to be horribly convicted when we get to heaven. And I think there's a whole bunch of people of color that will also be convicted because I think it works both ways. But as I read this, and it's just like, gosh, do I even go there? Even with our political climate, do I even mention some of those things? But people... We sing about, we, I believe, we honestly believe in God's agape love, that he can wash away our sins, that he can make us as white as snow, that he cleanses us from all the yee that goes on within us. But then we cannot forget 1 John 4, that he calls us to love and somehow, some way, I know in, the, in the reality is you can't do it alone. You're going to need people to help walk alongside you. You need to be in communion. You need to be in fellowship. You need to be in relationship with others to help us as God's church here in Artesia and beyond to make an incredible difference. And that the world will say the only way this has happened that it's a miracle. And it's because of the love of God. It's because people will see that God has changed hearts and has compelled me into action so that I can be his light to this world. I still think we have a hard time understanding it. I still think we take it for granted. I think our, our success as a country 
our success as individuals and what we have and where we've gone and what we've done still puts us at times thinking we are better than they and whoever the we is and whoever the they is or are. They are. Thank you. We need to live out this faith in ways that will shock ourselves, in ways that will shock our significant others, our kids, our grandkids. And we cannot do it on our own. It's the love of God transforming my, my heart through his living word and through my community with others that I'll be able to do that. So we have a video I want you to take a look at. We've seen it before. It's one of my favorite videos. That's why we've seen it before. But again, it puts uh, reality upon the idea of what sacrificial love means when you live it out with somebody else. Let's take a look at this. I don't count it a burden, whatever, to have to care for her. I, I need to do everything from the moment she gets up to the moment she goes to bed. I do absolutely everything. Um, I clean her teeth, I shower, dress, everything. And, um, but it's, pri it's a privilege. I count it a great privilege to, to care for this one that I've loved all of these years and continue to love. This is the year where we'll celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. Our stories have been a, a lovely story. I first saw her when she was eight years old and her brother became my best friend. And we grew up together and as we grew up, yeah, she was there. And I knew that she used to stare at me when I was playing footy with, my, with her brother and uh, another friend and when we used to ride bikes and she kept staring at me, but I wasn't interested. I was 17, she was 16. I saw her dolled up, dressed up, and she had an A-line dress on, and boom, it was gone. I was, uh, she was the one for me then, absolutely. <laughs> when we first started uh, dating, I used to ride my bike from where I lived to where she was, and that was about five kilometers on a Saturday afternoon, because it was the only chance we had to get together. And uh, it was hair wash day for her, and she used a special cream in her hair for a shampoo. And I can still smell it, because that smell was so particular, so nice. It was just absolutely special. We had a bike. I used to ride everywhere on my bike, and then Glad had a bike as well. And we put a, a baby chair on the front of her bike, and so we carried our babies around on the bike with her as well. So, yeah, bike's been part of our lives, and I guess that has something to do with us now. Around about 2004 5, I began to notice uh, that there were things going wrong. She was finally diagnosed with uh, the horrible disease of Alzheimer's. Having lived overseas, I knew that with a bike you can do lots of things. So I had a bike made, a bike chair made. We take it to the beach and ride along beside the beach. And as we do that, we see lots of people. A lot of people come talk to us because it's a, a unique thing. Nobody else has got a bike chair quite like that one. I am determined to care for her every need, every need. You see, God has loved us so unconditionally. And I understand that God has put his love in my heart. And because I realize how much God has loved me, that's how I too can love my lovely wife. She has done so much for me over all of these years. Now she can't, but I can, and I can return her love. Uh, and it's a love that, uh, well, to me, means I can do everything for her. She's my princess, I'm her William, and I wouldn't <laughs> have it any other way. Would you have it any other way? No, 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 no not at all. We love each other.